What is going on, everybody? So um, I haven't had a chance to look at this in depth yet, but I started looking at EIGRP over the top, and I got really excited and went to lab it out and take a look and see just kind of how it looks and how it feels before going in depth and reading white papers and writing a detailed blog post. And the how it feels in terms of configuration and operation uh, was super interesting. And I thought I'd do a really quick video on my first configuration, my first run through, if you will, uh, of over the top. And I think it's awesome. Uh, it kind of feels like simplified DM VPN, maybe sort of simplified. I don't know. Um, it takes your MPLS provider almost entirely out of the mix. Uh, I went through the Cisco white papers on this and uh, a few blog posts from from. Uh, uh, Cisco guys that I respect and none of them made mention of this so it could totally be a configuration error and I'm just too new to over the top to see how to fix it um, but essentially the idea with EIGRP over the top is that um, I didn't label my routers but this is R1 if you can see where my mouse is hovering um, R2 down here and R3 over here and the idea with EIGRP over the top is to allow these routers to peer EIGRP over the MPLS cloud without actually having to exchange EIGRP routes or do any BGP redistribution with your MPLS provider. So stay out of your, you can keep your routes out of your uh, provider's VRF and do all of your routing internally, which is pretty sweet. And the only way that I could see to do that before was with DMVPN. Um, if you want to take more time on your own and look at over the top, I can tell you that from a packet size comparison, I don't see a huge gain. The, uh, the GRE header required for DMVPN um, is pretty comparable to the Lisp header that you're going to have um, with over the top. So I didn't feel like it was a huge gain in terms of packet size and thereby performance, but I did think that from configuration it was pretty cool, and it's just another way that you can have a single converged network. And enough talking, we'll kind of just jump into this. So anyway, what I didn't find um, covered in uh, the white papers or on some of the blog posts that I read was that if you, I'll do the configuration first, but you'll notice that I have on all of my routers a static route. And that static route is how to reach all of these WAN facing interfaces. Uh, just a slash 16 and then the more specific routes get picked up by EIGRP. I didn't see that covered in any of the blog posts or white papers from Cisco. Um, and when you see the configuration, you can kind of see how it might work without a static route. It just doesn't. I did debug IP pack and saw encapsulation failed and it looked like, uh, at least on this particular version of iOS, that it didn't know where to afford these list packets unless it had a route in the routing table how to reach the remote uh, endpoints. So there's a bunch of different ways to, well not a bunch, but there's a couple different ways you can configure over the top. One is in a point-to-point -point fashion. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to set it up um, with R1 being an EIGRP route reflector. Um, and then my two other CEs, uh, R2 and R3, are going to peer to it. So I'll do the CEs first, uh, not the CEs, but the R2 and R3, um, the route reflector clients first. That's the easier config, and you can see again, I have my route on there and how to reach other uh, WAN facing interfaces. You can see the major network is 192.168.00/16, and then I have these loopbacks on uh, each. All right, so we'll just jump in and take a, see, take a look and see what the configuration looks like. It's going to be, I guess I left that in there. Uh, and you have to use named EIG or key mode, not um, your old school autonomous system number. So we'll name this OTP. Um, we're going to do address family IPv4 unicast, not unicat, and autonomous system 100. We're going to say network. I'll advertise all my networks in there. It doesn't really matter except for on where my route reflector is at, and I'll show you that in a minute. Do all connected networks will be advertised in EIGRP. Wow, that's really slow. Look at that, a little choppy. Okay, and now we're gonna say neighbor 192.168.1.10 is CE1's MPLS facing interface. 
show, oh, been on ASA too much. Show IP int brief, exclude unassigned. Let's see if I can remember this. I've only done this a couple times today. And we have to say it's remote. It's going to ask for a time to live value. We'll say 10, even though it's like two hops uh, through my MPLS cloud. And we're going to say it's Lisp in cap. And that should be it. All right, we'll see if I remembered it right. Probably not, though. No, I did not remember it right. All right, time for me to not embarrass myself anymore. <laughs> we'll just jump through and we'll look at the uh, iOS help for it. So you got neighbor 192.168.1.10. Oh, I got to specify my outgoing interface. That's what it was. Then remote. Then a time to live value of maximum hop. And now Lisp and cap. Cool. So I just fix that really quick. And router 3 gets the exact same config. And the only difference is going to be on the difference in configuration is going to be on my route reflector. So I'll jump on here. So I'll take that end out. Okay. And the first thing, since it is a route reflector client, or route reflector rather, and it's speaking to route reflector clients, is you want to turn off next hop south and um, and split horizon. So remember, split horizon with EIGRP will kill your hub and spoke advertisements. And you want to disable next hop south because you don't want EIGRP on the route reflector to rewrite the next hop value with its address. You want to allow these two uh, other CEs to speak directly to one another. Okay, so we're going to do that with AF interface. So we have to tell it what interface the AF interface is. There we go. And we're going to say no next hop south. No split horizon. And then we're going to say all networks advertised. And then here we have a little bit different. We're going to say remote neighbors. The source that we're expecting that on is Ethernet 0 slash 0. Unicast listen. Lisp in cap. And that's it. And we'll see our neighbors come up. There's router 2 comes up. Router 3 comes up. And before I show you what the, another funky behavior I caught with this, remember this is pretty new and I'm it might be better on newer versions of iOS, but it's still pretty awesome. Even with this kind of flaky behavior that I'll show you in a second. You show IP route, EIGRP. You can see that router 2 has routes to router 3 via router 3's interface, so our no next top self is working. And we'll see if we can ping CE3. And we can, and we can source that from our loopback, which is 192.168.20.20. That works. And the kind of flaky behavior is you'll notice this doesn't happen on the other CEs. If you look on CE1 or CE2 here, you can notice we have uh, the only route we have from router 3 is 192.168.20. Uh, dot 30 and it's a slash 32. It's not advertising, or we're not learning at least, uh, this interface. But you have to run EIGRP on this interface, this PE facing interface, otherwise the peering won't work. Um, but we are learning 192.168.1.0 slash 24. This is flaky uh, on Lisp 0, and that's this interface here. So you'll, you'll notice that I can't actually reach it. Right? It's kind of like um, when you're, it, it's, it's not kind of like, it's almost exactly like when you learn a tunnel destination um, via the tunnel interface. And then in GRE, that just causes the tunnel to flap and you get nice air messages. Um, with over the top, it just, your routes to the hub just won't work. So I'll try and ping 10.10 .10, and you'll see that it drops. Um, the fix for this, and I think I left the prefix list I wrote earlier in here. Show IP prefix list. I did. I fixed for this, just a quick uh, prefix list to deny that route outbound is how I fixed it. I'll put that on there. And this, honestly, um, in the named mode of EIGRP, took me a second to see where you apply your distribute list at. Because if you notice, you're like, oh, I just put my distribute. Okay, can't do it there. And you kind of iOS help. You're like, I don't know where to filter at. And for those of you that are like me and don't know, it's actually under topology 
base, and now you can put your distribute list on. Distribute list, prefix, EIGRP filter, we'll apply that outbound. Of course, if you've been doing this long enough, you know that causes a graceful resync with your EIGRP neighbor, so we'll just wait for that. Okay, there's our resync, so we should see this route is gone now. Remember, the reason that this route doesn't work is this is the tunnels or the Lisp interface source of uh, CE1 being learned by this Lisp interface. So again, it's, it's like learning the tunnel destination on a GRE interface via the tunnel. Um, it just doesn't, you, you can't route packets that way. So we want to make sure that gets filtered out. So now if we do a show IP route EIGRP, we just have EIGRP routes um, that we can actually reach over our Lisp interfaces. And now I should be able to ping 192.168.10.10, the ping that was failing right up here. Cool. Um, so I know that I went through this really, really quick. Um, I'll give you a quick show run um, EIGRP on both routers if you want to pause it on each so you can grab it. And um, I'll do a more detailed video probably in a week or so uh, when I have time to sit down and read through all the documentation on this. And hopefully I can find a way to get past this IP route. Um, <laughs> show run pipe include IP route. That helps. So uh, ideally, we wouldn't have to put uh, a route in for how to reach these, and it could be inferred from the config. That's how I would assume that it would work. But then again, maybe I'm just expecting too much of iOS. So here's my show run on my route reflector. Again, you can go route reflector has to be in named mode. So there's the name that I gave my EIGRP process. Uh, I have my address family specifying the autonomous system, and then I'm putting this in promiscuous mode, um, saying that... Uh, my remote neighbor's source interface 00, zero is in unicast listen and lisp in cap. And then I'm advertising all networks into EIGRP. If you lab this out on your own and you actually have an iOS that supports OTP, um, just know that you do have to run EIGRP on this interface facing your provider for this to work. And then on our route reflector clients or spokes, if you would want to think of them as that, simpler config. Um, just calling out IPv4, IPv4, Unicast, Autonomous System 100, and then we're specifying our neighbor. This IP address is the physical interface facing the PE of our route reflector or our hub. Specify an outgoing interface. We say that it is a remote client that we're peering with. You give it a, uh, a hop value, how many hops you want this packet to have, or a time to live value for your, um, for your EIGRP or for your Lisp packet and then you specify that it is Lisp in cap. And that's the same config over on CE3. So again, it's, it's pretty cool. It's kind, of, it's kind of like DMVPN, and it does have support for multiple route reflectors. So if we had like a, I don't know, a CE4 that we wanted to be a route reflector, uh, we could have both a peering, a static peering or a static neighborship um, with CE1 and CE4 if you wanted to have redundant uh, route reflectors, which is recommended by Cisco, so you don't have a single point of failure. Um, and again, currently, the only way that I can get this to work is with a static route so that the router knows how to afford Lisp packets properly. Otherwise, when you pull the static route out, you can do your debug IP packet, and you'll see that your router is like, yeah, I'm trying to send Lisp packets to 192.168.1.10, but I don't know what the outgoing interface is. Eh, encapsulation failed, and it just drops it. So I had to put a static route in to support that. So that's kind of the only only drawback that I that I stumble into. So hopefully this gets better with newer versions of code, but super, super cool and just shows a lot of the advancements that we have in EIGRP as Cisco has opened it up as an, as a new open standard and they're really pushing EIGRP hard right now and I love what they're doing with it.